You're listening to Black Girl Blueprint. Because Black girls did it first. And honestly, better. Period. Period. (laughs) Hi, everyone, and welcome to Black Girl Blueprint, your fave podcast for all the Gen Z Black Girl tea. My name's Lauren. And my name is McKean, and thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode. So... Today we're talking about uh, uh, something that has been long in existence and just really trying to stop Black women from being great. And that is just how Black women's bodies and behaviors are policed and silenced by the world. And I guess, you know, today's message in short is to stop telling Black women what to do. Like, stop. (laughs) Real. No, I think McKean and I were talking about it a lot in like prepping and like planning for this episode and it's just so interesting when you really sit down and reflect on just how like deeply ingrained like these type of attitudes of policing women like especially black women are in our society and just you know how women are judged for everything that they do and like just all the different facets of oppression just like he was saying trying to tell black women what to do so we're just gonna unpack mm-hmm. all of that today talk about our own experiences with it because we're sure Literally every Black girl listening is going to be able to relate. So we're going to unpack all of that today and, you know, talk about our own experiences. But first, we need to start out with the reading room. So, McKean, why don't you kick things off for us? Yes. So for anyone who by chance does not know, Read the Room is the segment where we just talk about our thoughts, you know, things going on in pop culture, things going on in our lives just what's happening in the world and how are we, what are our thoughts on it? So today we have a few, you know, we're returning to our favorite read the room topic, which is literally just what's going on on black Twitter. Mm -hmm. And first we would be remiss not to talk about the iconic bus it. And now Mm -hmm. the almost equally iconic silhouette challenges that I mean, you've probably seen them. If you haven't, I'm just kind of confused. Like, where you been? been? How did you find out? <laughs> oh my goodness. Those, first, let's start with the busted challenges. Those, yes. Amazing, iconic. There was real. a beautiful day, especially when there was just so many back to back. I was like playing that sound on repeat. It was just like, all you could hear in my room was just the busted song, and that was it. I would just be in awe because I would also be like, how (laughs) I one night I was in my room and I was like you know let me try this it can't be that too hard like I know I'm not working with much but like I could still you know little booties deserve love too Mm -hmm. and my knees just cracked like I didn't know (laughs) what like I just tried to like do the bend down or whatever and all I heard was a loud popping noise and I was like you know what this is not meant for me you know I have bad (laughs) knees I should have known better but I applaud everyone who had their, you know, was in their Meg Thee Stallion era, had those knees going. They... I'm so, did she do one? Did Megan Thee Stallion do one? She had to have. Did she not? Now that I think about it, yeah, she I did. don't think she oh my gosh, did. Imagine Meg do I feel like she does that all the time, though. I feel like. That's the thing. Like, yeah. that was, the dancing was her. Like, I mean, obviously people twerk, but like, it's just people the movements were definitely... Megan Thee Stallion. Like, oh, Mm-hmm. no I know what you mean like one time like in my room I was never about to rec- I knew from oh, jump of course this is not, not gonna be recorded no 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 and like this would never happen but I was like well how did like I literally was just watching when it was just like the physics of it are just not adding up for me and like I was like maybe it's easier than they're like maybe I'm just assuming that it's more difficult and then I literally was like like you I was just like no Mm-mm. Nope. for what for pain for pain <laughs> so I cried. Listen, I tried. I was looking in the mirror. I was like, this is gonna, you know, hype myself up. I'm gonna feel so far. All I did was like I got down and I couldn't get back up and I just <laughs> fell over. And I was like, my self-esteem. I will not be trying these challenges again. I'm but dead. it was beautiful to watch, especially we're gonna be talking about Chloe a little bit later, but Chloe's classic mm-hmm. challenge. Yes. Oh, word. Listen. <laughs> did you have here? Did just, that that was iconic. Okay. I was like so proud of her when that dro- I was like finally because she'd been wanting to bust it in these performances like all summer. Real. So I was just like finally like you are free and to do whatever you want and looking beautiful. Exactly. Listen, she came out with all this. She was like, listen, I don't have no Disney contract. Like I can do what I want to do. 
<laughs> exactly. This just a separate accounts just so I could post that one this. separate accounts. Amazing. I love them both. Also, I, mm-hmm. I love that they're so different, and I love how like Hallie seems very much like the quiet, like reserved one, but like everyone's like, no, it's the opposite for real. She's like the one that's like, there's that video of her driving. It's like Hallie on her way to drive to like beat everybody that's up real. that's coming for her sister. So it's just like accurate. Or even on that, like, but I know. there was the live that they were on together. And they were talking about their like types in men, and apparently like Hallie just really likes like hood men or whatever. And Chloe just like, <laughs> and I was like, okay. It's like shocking because she's like a little fairy, like, but it's just like, uh, uh-uh, don't get it twisted. I might be smaller, but <laughs> she's like, where the hood niggas at? It does it. I am the big sister. <laughs> Wait, she's the older one? No, oh, no, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> but like, I was just kidding because like, but yeah, she, but she is. is old. <laughs> Also, wait, did Chloe do a silhouette challenge too? I don't think so, but she like low-key did with that dance video in her room or whatever. It. But it wasn't technically one. Yeah. But the silhouette challenge but, too. Iconic. That's another one I will never oh, partake in. But okay. But before before we like admire it for how great it was, I didn't realize that people were actually like naked when they were doing it. And well, that's the thing. I th- I don't think it started that way, but then I think people like I've seen some gross ones come through my time. Not gross, but just like, whoa, it's 2 p.m. Like, chill. Yeah, <laughs> class. Please. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, I've seen some people pushing it. Oh my God, did you see? Oh my God, what's her name? Um, the comedian, Tiffany Haddish's what? with Common. No, she didn't. <laughs> I'm upset. I'm angry. Ooh, I want to look so bad. I respect it was just like this should have stayed in the drafts. Like I'm sorry, this should have like it was cute. It wasn't like this should have stayed in the drafts, not because it was bad. Like it was great. I'm proud of you, but like nobody asked. Nobody wanted to do this. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What did they do? Wait, I'm gonna. Oh. He like it's her doing it like the normal silhouette challenge, and then Common steps in the video out of nowhere, and they're like, I don't know. I stopped watching. Honestly, I didn't watch to the end. <laughs> Are you currently watching? <laughs> I don't know if this is it. Hold on. It probably is. I saw it. I think on the shade room. Okay, you know I'm, I'm gonna watch that later. But um, mm, maybe I won't watch. It's just like. It just, I don't know. Sometimes when celebrities top on like TikTok trends, it's just like, Why would you, do that? you shouldn't have. <laughs> but I feel like also, if there was like a couple that I would want to see do it, I don't think it would be them. It literally wouldn't be. <laughs> Tiana and Iman, go for it. Yes. I will watch. Gabrielle Union and, yeah, and, and Dwayne Wade. Like, mm-hmm. That's what I thought of that picture. <laughs> yep. Everyone yep. wants that. We want these things. We would love to see it. I would love to see again. Beyonce and Jay Z, on the other hand, no, I don't want to see Jay Z like that. <laughs> like, there's just some couples that I'm just like, keep that to yourself, mm-hmm. you know, like, do you, but I, I don't want really? to see it or see it. You, but you with know. the silhouette challenge, like, the whole thing with the silhouette challenge of like how I don't know, I guess some creepy men have figured out a way to like take the filter yep. off and now. I'm just disgusting. Ah. I mean, part of me is like, like I feel my mom and my grandma and me like, well, you should have never posted it on the internet <laughs> if you knew that that could happen. And I, I'm not blaming the women again. Like it was not their fault. Like ultimately, these men are so creepy. But it also was just like they can do anything. Like with whatever you post, like, and you're choosing to be naked on the internet, like. I'm not saying it's warranted or justified or like should have even been thought of, but I'm just saying like you risked being completely butt naked like on the internet with a filter, only a filter, like only a filter. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I I don't blame the women at all. I feel like women should be allowed to have fun and do challenges and in a perfect world not have to worry about those things. But just the men are just absolute. No, I totally agree. Like, I want to make that clear. Like, men are the reason that this women yes. can't have men fun. Men are the root of all problems. <laughs> men are the root like, of all That girls problems. have fun. But I, I also was, I just, when I realized, like, when I heard about the men putting the filter on to, like, reverse the red and black silhouette part of it, that's when I realized, first of all, that it was a filter. Because I thought maybe it was something about being backlit so that, like, you couldn't I thought it was see it all. 
but I don't think it's that. I don't, I think. Oh, I think there's both. Because I know someone, people who actually have like the LED red light. Like the red, we're, right. We're doing it like for real. Like a friend of mine actually has the light. Right. So he to use the filter, but people who didn't have the lights were using the filter. Mm. I'm also just like, I also was just even thinking about it. I'm like, how did you record yourself naked? Like, I don't even look at myself in the mirror for that long. Like, how did you <laughs> meet up with a straight face? I mean, I don't uh, man, it was something. I will say, like, I'm ready for the solo challenge to be done just because I'm tired of hearing that song. But it was an era, you know? It was. It, what song is the, it? Like, put your hand on my. I don't oh, know what the name yeah. of it is. It's like, <laughs> I don't even watch what sound anymore. Oh, I'm it was cute, though. It was iconic. I mean, it, I guess if I really was like, I want to see someone do it, I don't know. I don't actually, yeah. I mean, the silhouette challenge yeah. can go. Keep the bus challenge. The silhouette challenge for me. I like the bus challenge. Yeah. The silhouette challenge was just like, mm. it was like, okay. Yeah. I feel like mm. you could have sent this to somebody, like one on one. Like, I'm like, like, invasive. <laughs> I don't really care. But the bus went, bring the bus challenge back. Yes. And let me do it. Oh my God. Wait, we didn't talk about Jordan Woods' bus challenge. <laughs> okay. So, how do I put this gently? Um, she looked really great. She looked good. good. Mm-hmm. Why, she, why was she so aggressive with the <laughs> Someone said her butt was hitting her neck. I was like, whoa. But I know Kylie was mad somewhere. I know it. Of course. Like, shoot, my surgeon didn't let mine do that. <laughs> but no, she was like, and she was just doing it like, oh, really? But, you know, she looked great. She, she did looked look great. great. And I loved the little addition of the fan blowing the hair. That was clever. Yes. That was clever. She- Color spin on it. it I love like, that it felt like. <laughs> Honestly, I have no words. I was I'm fully here for Jordan Woods. Like I do stand Jordan Woods in this house. I want to see her get her own little show on E. And like literally, I want to see her take over what the Kardashians think they started. But I don't know if that's the bus challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that one was for her, but I'm, she looked like she was having fun. She did. And her closet looked lavish. That's one thing I was yes. paying attention to. Also, her relationship is so cute. Yes. Too. Oh, my God. We need to talk about them next week in the Valentine's Day episode. Oh, yeah. Wait, maybe we, maybe we get her as a guest. No, we stop. We <laughs> stop. We stop. <laughs> I just be chatting. I, I can't. Chatting. No, but for real? Shoot our shot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Anyways, on to, okay, a rumor that at this point it's hard to really believe, but some part of my spirit wants to is that Rihanna is going to release new music. And I mean, it might be true, and it might not be true. But the rumor is that I saw today, that people are mad about me for tweeting, also I will note, but (laughs) is that she supposedly is going to release two albums this year, one is a reggae album and one is like a pop and R&B album. I, the, the reggae album rumors have been so whirling for almost two years. Like, I know that much. <laughs> I'm just, we talked about this, I think it was in the 2020 recap episode. I, I'm really trying not to get my hopes up because I would love a Rihanna album. I need a Rihanna album in my life right now. And two, that just sounds a little bit too good to be true. The yeah movie. miss ma'am she would be the type to just like surprise and be like damn here you go and just like real. Give it and then that. disappear for the next 20 years Literally. but like as we talked about before like she's in her bag right now like fenty skin fenty beauty are both doing well her clothing line can't afford it but i assume that's also doing well mm-hmm. so like savage as, fenty as well like she's doing a lot of great things she is so i'm happy for her i want some music but i don't blame her for not putting anything out because like yeah. she's been doing she was 16 she's probably bored of making music no so. i feel them i'm just like please Give me a song. yeah <laughs> please but i don't know like i just i do have a feeling like whatever she drops next is gonna be it. maybe it forever i just feel like she's not i don't know i mean we're projecting we don't know this woman at all but <laughs> talking about this my friend i'm like yeah, i'm just like yeah Anymore. Based on what she said the other day, like it just doesn't really seem, you know, like her vibe anymore. 
I don't know, but I'm gonna still listen though. I'll could take whatever you I'll, listen, I'll listen to whatever she puts out. Yeah. Rihanna on a feature on anything, I will be there. I feel Rihanna like a song. clown because each of these rumors, like this rumor comes up like once a month, once every good months, but I still believe it every time. I believed it all of 2020. I think there were parts of 2019 that I was still hoping. So I mean maybe this will be the year. Third time's a charm. <laughs> I can't believe it was like what almost six years ago almost five years ago i think it was five years ago the other day yeah oh my god it took a long time like what? that was my favorite like body of work from her like auntie yeah. such a album. Well, that's what i think we might have talked about this before but i felt like that was the first album of hers that felt like authentically her, her. Like, yeah and i was like finally like i've been listening to you from day one don't don't get it twisted and i loved all of those but it was just like i feel like rihanna made this she put her foot in that. And then yeah. She left up. <laughs> and then she just disappeared. Mm. But it's fine. <laughs> you know what? If she releases something, I will be happy. If she doesn't, I will not die. So <laughs> but I won't awesome. be happy. Just but I won't be happy. I will be upset. I will not know joy. <laughs> it will not kill me. I can't. I think the last thing that we wanted to talk about kind of ties into like what we were talking about earlier with like the bus it silhouette challenge. But our Chloe Bailey of Chloe and Hallie was crying on the mm-hmm. TL. You know what made her cry? Y'all made her cry. If you made her cry, if you said anything mean to Chloe, <laughs> it's on site. <laughs> it is on site. Because how dare you? Literally. Like, if you thought Hallie would fight you, so will we. <laughs> like, we will, because I don't, well, first of all, I didn't watch the live, so I don't know exactly why she was crying or what people were saying. Maybe McKean can step in mm-hmm. on that. But what I heard her saying on the live was basically just like, I guess people were getting on her about like what she was posting with like the busted challenge or like with like the other video that she posted and she was just saying like I'm not trying to be like cocky or I'm not trying to like sexualize myself like I'm just took me a while to be this confident so now I just want to like embrace it and share it. No it definitely was just people like coming for her for a number of different reasons there were black women coming for her saying that she was acting too grown or like she was doing too much. I even had a conversation with a few women like millennial age women in my own life about that and they were like don't you think she was doing too much like don't you think her doing the busted challenges was a result of like internalized misogyny and i was like no the internalized misogyny is you trying to put you in but anyways anyways we don't I don't speak but anyway <laughs> So that was the thing, but like that was actually a thing like publicly, like everyone was like, she's being groomed, like this is not her, like her, the fact that she's doing this, like it can't possibly be her choice. It's like the industry forcing her to think she has to act a certain way. And like, even though the person I was talking to was all like, well, she comes from a good family, like da 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 da. And I was just like, what does this have to do with her choice of like how she dances on the internet? Like she still comes from a good family. She still is like the person that we thought she was before. Like she's just an adult now. Like <laughs> that is oh, literally for real. it. How is she acting to? Isn't she like what twenty two, twenty three? Mm-hmm. And it's just like it just doesn't make sense. And the thing is like it, it's a lot of projecting, I think, and it's a lot of like expecting certain things of them. And maybe it's partly because we were introduced to them literally as children. But it doesn't make sense. And, like, then it was also, like, in addition to the women coming for her, it was also men being, like, like, oh, you know, you know, typical, like, oh, she's being a hoe. Like, ever since she made a separate account, she's been wanting attention. Like, da 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 So, yeah, when she got on live and she talked about how, like, it took her so long to become comfortable enough with her body to even wear certain things. And, like, now that she's at that point, it's not, it's new for us, but it's not new for her. Like, this is something she's come into. And she was like, I know she said something about like, if you follow my private Instagram, which obviously most of us don't, (laughs) I don't. But she was like, if you follow my private Instagram, (laughs) she was like, you would know, like, this is something that I like to do. Like, I like to dance. Like when I dance and when I perform, I feel more confident. It was just like, let her live, let this girl live. There's no reason, like, what do you gain from what yes, do you gain exactly. from policing this? And that's the thing, like, I'm someone who watched a Busted Challenge knowing damn well that I would never do one. But that mm-hmm. doesn't mean I'm going to be mad about someone else doing it. That's what it feels like. It just feels... Like, mind your business is what it feels like. Exactly. Because, like, how does that impact you? And I think people, 
I think social media has definitely like made it easier for people to do this. People just give their opinions just completely unwarranted. Mm-hmm. Like nobody asked. Please show me who asked for your opinion because right. Chloe for sure did not ask. Even when people give like other opinions, like no, why would you go and like spread negativity or say something negative? That rem- anyway, I was gonna talk about the guy who responded to our tweet saying something negative and we were just like okay then keep scrolling and then he was like no people should be allowed to come and say things online i'm like and it's just like but for what like ultimately even if it is allowed like i mean now this gets into the whole thing of like people use the same argument for free speech and whatever but even if it is allowed like why what do you gain what do you like are you you choosing to represent yourself as a hateful person in the world that's all you gain and like is that worth it (laughs) and i think people use that free speech argument and they think that free speech also means no consequences Mm. and i'm like fine you could say whatever you want to say you can also politely catch these hands because you said what you had to say and now you think there should be no reaction exactly to it at all mm, you just i don't know for whatever reason you reminded me of something else too about the chloe and hallie situation because before she was even like before they would even wear costumes that were even like revealing in any way people were always talking about her being the thicker sister and like like wanting to see them like basically be sexy like people were always calling attention to that like she would wear a dress and they'd be like "Mm," like and it was just a lot of preying on her and like trying to push her to do those things what they weren't doing at the time and now that she's choosing to do them it's like people are like how dare you like da, 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 da. so it's just also like you can't win no matter what you can't win no matter what you do and that is what today's conversation is about yep literally the realities of being a black woman in the society is just no matter what you do you will be judged for it or you will you like face some type of consequence no matter what you choose to do and i think that in and of itself is just such a huge I don't know, such a huge, like, thing that I feel like we've all experienced from, like, childhood as well. And just, like, thinking about, like, growing up, I think since we're talking about, like, the Chloe situation, I think we can start by, like, talking about, like, the over-sexualization of, like, Black women as well as, like, a jumping off point. But, like, Black women are so hyper-sexualized in everything that we do. Like, even if we're not trying to be sexy, like, what you were talking about, like, Chloe's mind and her business wearing a dress, everyone's, like, shake some ass and like that's <laughs> and that's it you know what i mean mm-hmm. but i'm like also thinking about like I don't, i'm even thinking about like when i was a kid and like because like the patriarchy doesn't just function in a way of like it's women and men because there's also like intersectionality with like what black women face and what white women face right. as well and i would just keep thinking about like when i would like go to the beach or something like that and i would be wearing a bikini and my little skinny white girl would be also like be wearing a bikini or whatever and I would get like in trouble or I would get judged for being too revealing if you were wearing the Mm -hmm. exact same thing and I'm like we're the same age we're wearing the exact same amount of Chloe clothing like how am I right sexualized just because like what my body looks different compared to her and just like little things like that always got under my skin Mm -hmm. but then when I would want to like okay like maybe I'll just like cover up more it's just like oh what do you like like I don't remember what the insults would be but it's just like why are you wearing a one piece when everyone else is wearing a two piece mm-hmm. shirt I think no matter what you do it's an issue and that just I don't know that no. just really gets back in. it's tough and it's like I haven't personally experienced this but it's also I mean maybe this is another conversation but like that same thing is perpetuated within families and like cultural standards that have been set I guess you know like love my great grandma and I again I, I've never necessarily been told these things exactly by my family but like she's for context a Bayesian woman who I've never seen wear pants in my entire life <laughs> and I remember like I mean every time I would wear shorts something would be said about like my thighs and it was never like necessarily vindictive it would always just be like calling attention to it but it always was a little like whether it was her or just anyone in my family just like just calling attention to the fact that like you're wearing shorts and it's just like then I'm thinking about it for like the rest of the day but it's also because of the way that Bayesians kind of do it it's almost passive aggressive in that you don't really know what was being said but you know it's being called attention to because something about it wasn't right 
you know what I mean? So then you're here thinking like, what did I do? Like, is it because of how I look in them? Is it the shorts themselves? Like, are these things that I should be wearing? Is it, and then you start to think about it even in your own, right? Like, I'm thinking about what my thighs look like at school where all the girls have shorts on because I was told by people that I, whose opinions I've been taught to value that it was, there was something about it that was worth calling attention to, you know what I mean? So yeah, it is tough. And I mean, I don't know where it stems from. I don't know, like, I just don't, it just always raises the question of like, why? Why, like, what do we gain from forcing black girls to think about themselves as different especially when coming from our own when you know that they've experienced it too you know what I mean so you can't even really blame them but it's also like you know so why are you doing it (laughs) that the the point that you just raised means actually like so much just thinking about my experiences in like my household because I experienced exactly what you're talking about like anytime I would wear a crop top if I chose to wear shorts even now at my big age if I choose to like wear something that's like strapless my mom would just like oh like you still like to be naked or whatever like, mm-hmm. you never like to wear any clothes or whatever and I'm like girl I'm wearing jeans and like this shirt just doesn't have straps it's just off the shoulder or something like that okay. and I think that would always like get to me and get under my skin and my mom would like know that it upset me and it would I would try not to get mad at her though, because I felt like I could understand where she was coming from because she probably just looking out for me because Mm -hmm. it's something that she experienced. But also at the same time, I'm like, why aren't you, you know that it's hurtful. Why are you doing it to me? Or like, why aren't you helping me to unlearn that? Because you also know that that's BS. Like you also know that the fact that I chose to have my clavicle exposed doesn't mean that I'm looking for male attention. Like you know, you understand that. So why are you ingraining that into me? Or why are we perpetuating that? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. And I mean, it even speaks to the, just, I mean, one, we, this is a larger conversation of like the things that we wear and the things that we do are not indicative of our value as people, one ever, like at all in any capacity. But it also gets into the conversation of like, just, Black girls being described as fast just because of how they, what clothes they wear. Like, that is a problem that you, like, to me, it is a problem for any adult to ever think of a girl as at all sexual because of what she's wearing. Like, you are the problem and, like, you're disgusting and, like, that should raise some red flag for everybody around you. Like, yes, 100% agree. Especially in, like, Caribbean culture. Oh, like there's a whole culture around like calling young girls, like you said, calling them fast, saying that like they're looking for like attention from grown men or they're being too forward, being too womanish, acting too grown, whatever. I'm like, this is like a child. That is a grown man. Mm-hmm. If anything happens, like where there is some type of a, I'm using this ver- word very loosely, like relationship yep. between them, that is never the young girl's fault. And I hate that I keep having to explain that to my family. I'll be like, yeah, like, you know, that's never the girl's fault. Like, she's being groomed. She's underage. The man is always at fault. And they'll be like, well, you know, what if she was pursuing him or whatever? I'm like, she's a child. She right. cannot pursue a grown man. That grown man can say no. Her brain's not even fully developed yet. And you're still finding a way to, like, blame the victim. Like, even I had a situation that happened very recently where actually one of my um, teachers that I had um, my music teacher, mm-hmm. when I was in high school, actually got arrested for um, pedophilia, I guess. Oh my God. I don't because he was like texting young girls very provocatively, saying some very out of pocket stuff. Mm. Um, but then the screenshots got posted, and there was a lot of people on the timeline being like, I feel like she deleted some of the messages. Like she had to have been saying more to him. I'm like, that is not the point. That is not what we're talking about here. Really? This is a 10th grader talking to what? like a 50 year old man I'm like there's no situation at all where the girls are women I don't care if she was texting him back he's at fault Why right. did he first in the first place and I feel like that isn't something that I should keep needing to explain or keep needing to say like stop victim blaming mm-hmm. and like stop trying to hold like women accountable for things that they shouldn't be held accountable for especially as children right like and I think that also plays into like 
this idea, even thinking about like the difference between like black women or like black young girls and like white young girls, is that like black girls have to grow up so quickly. Mm. We have to grow up so, so fast. And we are held accountable and expected to be grown or expected to be grown ups so much faster than our white counterparts. It is actually scary thinking about like people, you know, like parents or adults would be like, oh, like you're being too grown, you're acting too fast, but expect you to be able to make your own decisions, expect you to like be able to hold your own or whatever, or be held accountable at like 12, Mm -hmm. like 13. And I'm like, you don't do this to that little white girl. Like they're still Mm -hmm. able to like maintain their childhood, maintain their innocence. And as they get older, but we have to like, be a grown adult or even black boys I've actually I've noticed this within my own family like the ways in which daughters are treated and expected Mm -hmm. to be at certain levels at certain points like one of my cousins will be her mom will be like when are you gonna move out meanwhile her little brother is like she literally is writing his college essays (laughs) like it just doesn't make sense not getting started literally if I tried to do half of the things that my little brother is doing right now in that house, being a tyrant, I would, mm-hmm. I would never, I would never have been able to get away with it. Even like in terms of the fact that he's like able to like go out, and I understand that some of this is safety, sure, but like he can talk to my parents any type of way, not get in trouble. He can do. He I, when I grew up, I had like parental controls on my TV. My internet was switched off by I can use it after ten. Now that man is just like. I say man loosely. No, I know. <laughs> but he is like able to do whatever he wants to do, like go out until like all hours of the night. And I'm like, I could have never done that. He'll get like in trouble with school. And I'm, my parents would just be like, hmm, okay, me, if I got like an A minus, my mom would be on my ass. So wow. it just doesn't make, it doesn't add up. And, and the thing is, I think something would be, I don't know if this would make it completely better, but I think something would be, if, it, if it's true that the policing and the controlling of Black girls was in an effort to protect, something could be, like, maybe an argument could be made that it could be more effective if you at least spoke to Black girls about why. You know, it's one thing if you just call a Black girl fast and let her, leave her to figure it out. It's one thing if you just call attention to some girl's thighs and, like, leave her to figure that out. But it's another thing if you say, like, I mean, it's still a burden and it's still a problem, but never is that extra step taken of trying to explain, I'm doing this because I don't want you to go through things that maybe I've been through or women that I know have been through. And again, like that would not be enough, but I'm just trying to imagine like, what if instead of telling a black girl like, oh, you look fast because of that clothes, the clothes you have on. And instead we're like, there are men in the world that are disgusting. Mm-hmm. And, and that doesn't mean you should change how you should behave, but that's something to know. Like, you know what I mean? If instead we warned them of the threats that are around them rather than trying to warn them against being themselves, exactly. what can be done? And yeah, that little like shift in the narrative, like it seems subtle, but as like a young black girl, that changes it from like, I'm the problem, like I'm the issue, like I'm asking for this to a bigger conversation of like, I need to protect, like, I need to be protected from X, Y, and Z that right. can happen. Like, I feel like the whole thing of, like, you have shorts on and, like, your thighs are out. Maybe you seem like, oh, I'm the problem. Oh, I'm asking for this. Whereas, like, you know, framing it in the way of, like, just be, be careful and note this X, Y, and Z. Like, again, I still think that more attention needs to be paid to, like, telling these young boys to stop being disgusting instead of, like, policing, like, what you know, young, like, girls can wear, Mm -hmm. but I mean, if you are going to take that extra step, because I guess you do have to, like, protect them, and we do have to be cautious, it's just the world that we live in, explain that, and don't make me feel like I'm the problem, Mm -hmm. because I'm not the problem. Exactly, and then, I mean, then it's just, like, a whole cycle that, you like, you're teaching girls from the jump to protect men at every point, you know what I mean? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, it, you are, from the very beginning, it's always, like, there's, you don't leave any room for there to ever be the possible possibility that they like, you know what I mean? Like you don't leave any room for them to believe that at any point it could not be a woman's fault. Like 
and that it could not have been subconsciously something that they wanted, even if they didn't know they wanted. Because like ultimately, if you tell a little girl who chose an outfit that she likes that she's being fast and she's like, well, I just wore this because I wanted to wear it, that is immediately going to ma make her call into question the things that she wants. Yeah. And then her wants become limited and restricted because she's afraid of like what that might attract. And if she ends up attracting that anyways, despite going, despite restricting her wants because of what she's been told to do. But if she chooses to stop wearing the short shorts because her mom told her not to, and still is attracting that attention or is still abused because of men again being trash, then it's a, it's it's always a question of like, it just doesn't add up. It literally just doesn't make sense. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know, if the, it's not a complete thought, but it's just like- No, I know what? exactly. But I feel like they don't also take into account how that like plays into the way women see themselves and interact in relationships as they get older. Like even now, like I'll be talking to like my roommates or my friends and they'll be talking about like their interactions with men. And even when the man is so clearly at fault, did everything wrong, I'll still find that most of them will be like, but I did this or like, it could have been because mm -hmm. I did that. Or like, maybe I made them feel this way when I did this. Like we're so conditioned to blame ourselves or think that something that we did was the problem when no it's never, not never ever and I mean, like no, no literally no i was like trying to think of <laughs> no never us literally and um it's just it's so so frustrating and like like i was saying like that really plays into like how you interact in the future mm -hmm. like with people because you still have that in the back of your head right. you still have that like cautiousness because like that really like like you said like it polices you mm -hmm. it kind of like restricts what you can and can't do and then if you go outside of that bound or say like you do you know you're, you're like okay whatever i'm just gonna do what i want to do mm -hmm. and then you, something happens that kind of like reinforces the idea even though that was never the right issue. exactly <sighs> yeah mm, a mess but i think i guess you maybe the, this is like a good point to transition to the second part of the conversation which is also like Black women, women generally, but especially and particularly Black women, never being encouraged to engage the things that they like. Mm -hmm. And from the beginning, I mean, whether it's clothes, like we've been talking about and the, the way that they choose to present themselves, but or whether it's like just literally like hobbies and things that they're into, it's there's always some fault that attention yeah. is called to whether it's a legitimate fault or not, to discourage them from believing that their interests are valid. You know what I mean? It's constantly oh. attempts, like constant attempts to invalidate what black women want to do. It happens all the time. With like Except any for when black women want to save ourselves and end up saving the country. And then it's all like, yay, like yay, black women. Black women. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I speak, but especially when it comes to like interests and hobbies, it happens all the time. Especially the way that women get grilled just for simply liking something. Like, yeah. God forbid a woman say that she likes sports or anime or skateboarding or playing video games or anything that's considered to be like stereotypically like for men. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Like the way that they will like, I remember one time. I was talking to this guy and we were talking about like Marvel movies because I'm like a huge Marvel fan. I've seen every single movie. Mm -hmm. Some of the comics, like I, I know my Marvel. And I told him that I liked it. And he was like, oh, like, you know, like you've probably just like only seen like, what movie did you say? Avengers or Black Panther or something like that. And I was like, no, I've now seen all of them or whatever. And then started like grilling me and being like, oh, like what's this? Like what is like giving me a pop quiz. And I'm like, you would have never done this. If a man told you that he liked Marvel, you would have been like, ah, right. yeah, bro, cool, cool, cool. Like, why can't it be the same thing? It's the I can't imagine what, like, gamer girls right. or, like, anime girls go through. Because, like, men, oh, oh my god, constant disbelief and, like, attempt to poke holes in what women say about themselves. Like, there's never a belief at face value that's granted to us for whatever we say. Like, why would I be lying about the things that I like? <laughs> like to impress you? Right. Because I could do that anyway. And I did that anyway. I did that by existing. Exactly. Kind of and like, then the thing is, like, the thing is, because it, what is implied when they do that grilling is that, like, this is something that you shouldn't like. 
So then mm -hmm. even if we think to the things that black black women, but women's generally should technically like, like fashion or, you know, makeup, makeup they still won't see the value and the complexities and the intellect that those things require. Like they're like, oh, you just like fashion as if fashion can't be like a whole political thing that requires right. like deep knowledge about trends and past and just think it's an it's a nuanced right. thing or whether it's like oh you just like makeup like what what's wrong with makeup you just like Tom yeah. Brady like you're boring sir sir and that's the thing. oh my god the thing that really grinds my gears is that men are so boring like men will go out of their way to discredit women to invalidate women to make fun of women I'm like y'all are so predictable like men have like no flavor whatsoever this is gonna be turning be hating men but literally it's just like compared to women are so interesting like i can talk to a girl all day every day men it's just like three word sentences like three words total in their vocabulary and you're really trying to believe what women can and can't be interested literally, in literally like i can predict what you like in like exactly. three yeses max there's really only three options there's three types of men they either like sports they like gaming or they like there's two types of men. <laughs> Where's the anime side fall? Because I feel like most I've seen so many like, 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 oh, true, maybe. But I've seen so many. Like, that's the thing, though. The thing is, like, as common as those interests are, we're never just like, oh, you're just in the sports. Like, oh, oh you're just in an true. anime. Can you imagine? Imagine if women actually, I'm gonna start doing that. You know what? I'm gonna be on my dating apps. They ask me what if they say they're interested in sports. I'm like, really? But I'm that's like, also okay. the thing that's even funnier because, like, even if you think about this quote unquote specific and traditional women's interests, I will mm -hmm. never see no woman with like sports in her bio or like anime in her bio. But there's so many men in this world who use it as a personality trait. So it's just like, Yo. oh my goodness, yes. If <laughs> it just raises so many questions like you publicly are proud about having the same interest as like 10,000 other dudes mm -hmm. and you're trying to grill me really for whatever I claim to like I'm saying just let people like what they like and like I, I can't remember the last time I had an interesting conversation with a man and men have, will have the audacity to be like women are boring women are uninteresting or women aren't funny that's the one they love to say women aren't that funny is the one because and, and then i think about all of these men especially black men we don't we put it there especially these black men who will get like famous or get their like clout or whatever by making videos where they're dressing up as women and being funny i'm like yeah. i thought girls were funny why are you acting like a girl in order to Literally. be funny like I'm honestly like, most famous comedians like everybody yeah. and it doesn't make sense and it's never funny and it's never <laughs> entertaining it's never like Hi. no yeah. words literally no words and it's just it's just things can't win like it's constantly it's it applies also to you know going back to the appearance thing like it'll be like mm, i hate girls with natural hair and so we'll get a weave and they'll be like oh black women always have weaves in like da, 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 da. and it's just like yeah. okay what or <laughs> so what do you want like what, what and literally or even thinking about like oh my goodness what's another example even think about like women with like multiple sexual partners let's use that as an example like say that you find a woman who like embraces her sexuality has multiple partners like men will be like oh she's a hoe she's this and that blah 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 and then on the other side of the spectrum, let there be a woman who just like does not like engage or does not want or waiting until marriage, whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's a prude, she's a tease, X, Y, and Z, she's boring. Or like even if you find yourself like somewhere in the middle, they'll still find something. Literally something. You want. And I'm like, make it make sense. Or even thinking about like women being called aggressive, especially black women, especially black women. Mm. Speak on like it. men will be like, oh they'll be like oh like i don't like black women they be too loud they be too aggressive x y and z but then let you just like sit down and be supposed to be like oh she's boring she's this she don't got nothing to say really? no wait on that note you just reminded me of i saw this twitter thread a while ago of a girl who got fired i think from buzzfeed maybe from buzzfeed she got fired and it was like she asked why and her boss was like oh you're just not a team player and she's just like I'm an introvert. 
<laughs> and Wait, then the no, baby, yeah and it was a whole conversation and it was it was i'm not gonna get off the nuance of it and i wish i had her name in mind but she just talked about how black women aren't allowed to be introverts and mm -hmm. you know something is assumed to be wrong with them for not or for, with us for not wanting to engage in the way that we are taught to be expected to engage so it's also like if i'm not being loud you're like why aren't you being loud you know what i, I mean but it's what, never what the question of like cool. why aren't y'all trying to engage with me why aren't mm -hmm. you guys having conversations that are ma made in an effort to add nuance like why would i want to talk to y'all about sports again back to the sports thing like <laughs> i don't care about your sport uh, okay call me, not a team did. player but literally like i'm trying to go home shoot i'm doing my job like you know it's beyond the job expectations it's literally a a policing of demeanor for no added value to the work and it's never also assumed like it's interesting that she would be fired for something like that before she's asked are you comfortable mm -hmm. like is there something yeah. with this space that is making you not want to engage in the way that we th think you should you know what i mean it's never there's so many steps that are just skipped it's just like mm, she's something's wrong with her something's wrong with her like, like that's just it's so refreshing and we don't get like the benefit of the doubt that everyone else gets mm -hmm. or like the room to have nuance like you were saying and i'm even thinking about like because while you're thinking about that i was thinking about like fashion and stuff as well like even in terms of like the way we present ourselves like the type of pressure that's put on women to like wear like different outfits every day or like always have our hair and makeup done or like always x y and z versus like especially think about celebrities actually mm -hmm. that's what i was thinking about like a man can wear the exact same suit to every event, nobody bats an eye. Let a woman wear the same dress twice. It's on every news outlet. She repeated the outfit. She did X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, why is this a big story? Right. Like Tom over there has been wearing Literally. the same suit for like 10 years straight. Why does nobody care? It and doesn't it's like, make sense. Like and then and then they'll turn around and be like all she care about is clothes like she's too much clothes she spent too much money on like stupid stuff like shoes da -da 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 and it's just like bro we can't win huh like it just doesn't add up it really it never adds up and i mean there's so many other things i could think of like even with thinking back to chloe and hallie like if okay let's say that their argument is true 22 is too young to be twerking online. She's mm -hmm. acting too grown. That's what the argument is. But they don't like the 30 year olds that are doing it either. Mm -hmm. And nope. by 40, it's like, oh no, like you need to oh, be caring for your children. Like, what are you doing? So it's also just kind of a question of like, so when, if it is an age thing, which is what you argue, at what point is it like 37? Is it exactly 37 and a half? I'm the exact age. <laughs> I don't know what the what the range is here. Even in terms of aging, there's a double standard with men and women. It's like women are considered old by the time that they're 30. Men are in their prime at 40. And it's like we lose value as we age mm -hmm. and men just like keep glowing up. I'm like, and I don't believe in that. I feel like yeah. everybody, I think we talked about this yep. in the episode. I was actually about to quote somebody. I think I was about to quote you. <laughs> But when you said the thing, I think that your dad or maybe someone told you that you're only mm -hmm. getting better as you age because yeah. you're like gaining more and more. So I'm like, I don't believe in that anymore. But society still is just like, they'll post a picture of like, Ashanti gets it all the time. They'll be like, Ashanti looks so good. I'm like, 30. Right. Like, what did you think no, that's what like, honestly. What 30 look like? I like, tweet, I tweet celebrity birthday content a lot because like people like it and it's always to like oh my god it'll be like happy 30th birthday and they're like oh my god she's 30 like i thought she was 22 and i was like first of all you realize those ages are not that far apart they're, not like, that far they're apart. actually pretty close to each other and also what do y'all think a 30 year old looks like but <laughs> literally just, old washed up ready for the grave housewife with kids also, even like women get judged a lot for not wanting kids versus men. Mm. I think about that a lot because I'm a very big proponent. Maybe I'll end up having kids, but at this point in my life, I'm very much like, if it happens, it happens. I don't really get baby fever. I'm not that into kids. <laughs> I said that to my mom, and she was like, "You don't want kids." She was so upset. She was personally offended. 
I don't know if it's because she wanted grandkids, but I'm like, you got another kid. You did you listen. Right, it go won't be him. Me. Shoot. I'm like, go hound him, but she won't. Because she'll be like, you're supposed to have, you know, the maternal gene. It'll come as you get older. I'm like, or maybe it won't. And maybe you won't get any grandkids from me. And you need to accept that because like men not wanting kids is like normal. But let a woman say that and it's like something's wrong with you. Mm-hmm. Like you something's not right. Oof. There's so you know? much. There's so much we could talk about here. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just, at the end of the day, I guess the moral of the story is like, literally every logic that has ever been formed against women has holes in it. It's not mm-hmm. sound, it's not consistent, and it's not true. And women and have to tell ourselves that we're perfect. Like, we literally have to tell ourselves that we can't do anything wrong to counteract everything that we are being told. And that's yeah. it. That is real, period. <laughs> because at the end of the day, my moral of the story is mind your business. Literally. Like mind the business that pays you, what I choose to wear, how I want to present myself, whatever I want to do, how I want to behave, that is my business, mm-hmm. my concern. If I did not send for you, don't come to me with your opinion. Exactly. That, is that is my moral, that is my motto. But yeah. on like a more general note, just I think the moral of what we are really trying to say is just like stop playing the police black women and stop mm-hmm. having us to these like double standards or like holding us up to this unattainable standard of what you want us because it's not realistic mm -hmm. at the end of the day i don't know if people realize this black women are still human beings like i feel like that's a given but it's also just like no real like and it's like Like, don't love me now that i'm doing you well if mm -hmm. you were hitting on me before like don't want me to be a loud black girl when you were complaining about the loud black girls that you encountered the other day in public. You know what I mean? Like, don't want, just, it's just keep it 100, keep it consistent and also consistent. keep it over there. Like keep it all the way over there. Cause I don't care at the end of the day, like you could go journal about it. <laughs> go write your dad, go cry yeah, about go it. Go send your mama a voice note. I don't care, but don't send it to don't me. Talk to me. <laughs> don't talk to me cause I don't care. And that is on period. period. And that's period. Anyways, <laughs> what an episode. I, I feel like we needed to have this. This is an ongoing thing. We might have this conversation again because it's just like, there's so much that we are told to do and how we are told to exist and how we are told we need to present ourselves. It's just, It never ends. Mm. And it's very, very annoying. And but the sad part is like, this is not something that's going to go away like overnight or anytime soon. Like we're going to keep having to endure this and deal with this. And it's a hot mess. Mm -hmm. It's a hot mess. But over there. Anyway. So, anyways, on to the closing so question. Right yeah, right. You know, we always like to close our episodes with what is bringing us joy. So, okay, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, I have to think. I feel like I've said most of my joy things. I told y'all the show that I'm watching that still bring me joy. But is that on HBO? Mm-hmm. Um, no, it's on Hulu. It's called Queen Sugar. I got HBO now. Oh, period. Congratulations. I, I might still not watch Insecure. <laughs> no, you should watch Insecure. You will be pleasantly surprised. Watch episode one. Just try it out. I think I've seen episode one. Watch episode two. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Okay. Um, shoot. Okay, Joy. Joy. Oh, wait. Did I say this last week? Did I say a class last week? Shoot. <laughs> Yeah. Was- something new girl there's snow outside i thought you would say that no but i mean i've said that before too so i was <laughs> i have nothing new well, let me think oh i have something that's bringing me joy okay go ahead it's black history month and <laughs> honestly i know i know that's like not a thing like i know it's not a concrete thing but i love black history month and i love the content that comes up during it i wish it was a year-long thing i think twitter was such a joyous day yesterday and that's bringing me joy <laughs> that's fine i'll give you that one <laughs> um, my thing is well i talk about my internship with warner music that starts next week. I'm finally getting my social security number. Oh, um, wait, what do you gain week? from that? I'm able to get paid. Oh, um, wow. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> That's a big part. That's a big thing. Um, 
Also, I have an event that I host for my other internship mm -hmm. that's coming up on Thursday. I'm really excited about that one, actually. Mm -hmm. It's there's two black girls on it. Um, it's like a panel of like four young climate activists or whatever. And one of them is like 14 and she did so much good work. And oh I was goodness. doing back and forth with her and she was just like, yeah, I'm in the middle of midterms. Like my class is getting hard, but I have all A's right now. So I'm trying and I'm like, she's like, it's my first year of high school. I'm like, go make me cry. Please. Oh, like, girl, you got a storm oh. coming. Sorry. I'm like, I got a ways to go, babes. <laughs> but that's on Thursday and I'm really excited. We already have a hundred and like 30 people registered. To wow, event. that's major. Oh, these that's events major. do well. Honestly, I'm putting the Earth Institute on the map. They need to wow. raise or something. The Earth you know, Institute they knew nothing Earth. about the Earth Institute until I started working there. Period. So I ain't never heard of it until just now. Exactly. So. Hey, that's enough. Get <laughs> oh, well, that's all that we have for you guys today. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. And this is really a much of conversation. Uh, yeah, you know, a whole lot to unpack. Until next Friday when we drop our little V Day episode. Okay. Make sure to keep up with us on social media, on Instagram at Black Girl Blueprint, and on Twitter at B Girl Blueprint. And also, like, y'all hit us up. Send us the questions. Send us the tea. Like, do you have something really crazy going on in your friend group? We want to know. We want to know it all. So, That's all the tea. You know where to find us. What we live for, <laughs> real. And yeah, if you like this episode, let us know by subscribing so you get a notification every time we upload a new one. Leave us a little review. Give us a little five stars if you wanna. And yeah, that's it. We'll see you all next yep. week. Bye. See you next week. Bye.